Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to see how to write integration test for the Kafka based application. While running the integration test, we also need to have one Kafka server running so that we can verify different messages are being published to the Kafka topic. Or similarly, if you are testing the consumer application, then based on the messages which are being published to the Kafka topic, consumer is receiving that and doing its own functionality. But by having the external Kafka server running, we might get into some of the problems. For example, if you are running the integration test and at the same time the Kafka server is down, so our test is going to fail. Similarly, if we are testing the consumer application, we are expecting some messages to be published to the Kafka topic, testing some of the behavior. While running that integration test, because of some external force, there is some different messages being published to Kafka topic, then our integration test is going to fail because it has different message which we are not expecting within our test. We have some of the external factor because of that our integration test might fail. So in this scenario, what we have to do is we need to have one server specifically running for the integration test. It could be an in-memory Kafka server, which is embedded Kafka server, or it could be a Docker container. So whenever your integration tests are running, then only these server will be started with the initial state, whatever is being required by the integration test. And as soon as the Kafka integration tests are done, then all of these application will be destroyed as well. So in this video, we are going to see both the ways, one, the embedded Kafka and then the Docker container. So let's get started. I have the consumer service. So basically here we have the Kafka listener and it is listening to a specific topic, which we have defined within the application properties, which is message topic. Whenever any message will be published to this message hyphen topic, then our consumer will be receiving that. And this message will be stored in the consumer repo. For the simplicity, I have just added one hash map. Whenever any message will be received by this repo, it will be added into this hash map. You can have different scenario where you can have database or any other data source. Now within our test scenario, here we have the message that we want to publish and after publishing this message, we are expecting that the repo has received that message and this is what we have asserted. Here we have defined the Spring Boot test. That means it will load all the Spring Boot context, which is required for the consumer application. If I just run this particular test here, let's see what happens. Test is failing and here we have defined the assertion and we are expecting that repo should have the message with ID 1 which is this message. But of course, we cannot expect this right now because we haven't sent the message to the Kafka topic. But this is not the only problem. Right now, the other problem is here, it is trying to connect with the Kafka server, but it says broker may not available. And if you just look at the port 9094, here it is trying to connect with the port 9094 and it could not establish the connection with the Kafka server. And this is because we don't have Kafka server running at the moment. We can run the Kafka server in our local system or in the Jenkins machine, but because of the same region as we mentioned earlier, it is a bad idea. Now what we need is we need to have one Kafka server running within the memory. For that purpose, we can add the embedded Kafka and here I can add the embedded Kafka with one annotation, which is at the rate embedded Kafka. And now if we just look at this embedded Kafka interface, so here we have the Kafka test context. We have added one library, which is Spring Kafka test. From this library, we are getting the embedded Kafka. And now within embedded Kafka, we can define different properties. For example, if we need to run a Kafka server in different port, or we need to provide the partitions or the zookeeper port or other Kafka related properties, all of those properties we can define within the embedded Kafka. Here we can set the broker properties. For example, if you need to define the Kafka server and the port, then we can define the listeners property like this. So here we have the local host and the port. Here, whatever port we will define, Kafka embedded server will be running at that particular port. And this is what you have to define within your application properties file as well, so that your application is listening to this particular port. Now, with this configuration, I can also add the partition. For example, if you just need one partition, by default, it has two partitions and I just need one at the moment. So I can define that. And also you can define Jupyter property or other properties as well. But for the basic setup, we just need these properties. Now, if I run the consumer service test, let's see what happens. Again, test is failing, same region. We haven't sent any message to the Kafka topic, but let's look at the logs. So here we have the Spring application started and then it has also started the Zookeeper 
here you can see we have the broker and all the setup is done that means whatever server we have started here as the embedded kafka that is being started and the kafka application is also able to connect with that now only thing is we need to send the message to the kafka topic for sending the message to the kafka topic you can either use the kafka producer or simple way is using the kafka template so here we can also add one of the dependency and we can auto wire the kafka template With the help of Kafka template, we can send the message to the Kafka topic. Template.send, we need to send the message to the test message topic. And then here we have the data. In case of data, we need to send the message. Consumer is going to read this message. So here we have sent the message. And the topic name we have defined within our application property. Either we can use the application property name or we can just directly use this message topic. Now. If you will send this message to the Kafka topic, let's see what happens. Here it is still failing. And the reason behind this is when we are sending the message to the Kafka topic, consumer is going to pull the messages from the Kafka topic. And when we are running this particular test, possibly before asserting these lines, the pull did not happen. For that purpose, what we can do over here is we can just apply the sleep for a while. So here chat.sleep and let's sleep for say 5000 milliseconds so still it is failing and here the region is when we are sending the message to the kafka topic cannot convert value of class message to class string serializer when we send any message to the kafka topic there can be a key and value right now we are sending the value to the kafka topic this is of message type and the default serializer is the string serializer as we have added the kafka properties for the deserializer, here we have the JSON deserializer and the string serializer for the key. Similarly, we also need to add the Kafka properties for the producer. Here, the producer key serializer is the string serializer, and similarly, the value serializer is the JSON serializer. So, whenever any message will be sent to the Kafka topic, message will be converted into the JSON, and that is what will be sent to the Kafka topic. These are the producer properties. Usually these properties will remain in the producer application, but while running the integration test or while running the test for that matter, we need to have those properties in the test as well so that we will be able to send the message to the Kafka topic. If I'll run the test. Now this test is successful and application is able to connect with the Kafka topic and then we have verified that the messages which are sent to the kafka topic has been received by the consumer and because of that we have this message available within the repo there is a possibility that our consumer is pulling the message within 1000 milliseconds only but still we are waiting for 5000 milliseconds so we are wasting 4000 milliseconds here instead of waiting for this time what we can do is we can keep asserting and if our assertions are successful then our tests are okay otherwise we will wait and then we'll assert it again as long as our tests are failing, we will keep asserting and we can have one upper limit on the time. So here we have the test containers dependency and this provides us a couple of methods which we can use in our test. So let's go back here. Here we can apply the await. And this is coming from the test container. Here we can wait for some amount of time. There are different methods in here. Like for example, we have at most. So it is the maximum limit of time for which we need to wait. And here I'll just use the durations of millis. The same time we have added about. We are going to wait for at most 5000 milliseconds. Until then we will keep trying and for that we have the until asserted method. And here we can just apply the lambda expression. Here we can add the assertions like this. Now if our test will run it will start with the assertion. If it is failing, it will wait for some time and then it will start again. It is successful or the specific amount of time is passed. Now I'll just remove this thing and with the help of this assertion, let's see what happens. If we will run the test. So our test is successful. In this case, our test was blocked for 5000 millisecond, but here it will start asserting. If it is failing, then it will keep trying. And as soon as it is successful, it will just finish the test until this time if our tests are not successful that means the test is 
failing. In the same way, we can add the test for the producer as well. For the producer, we have defined one producer application. So here we have the producer service. Whatever message we are passing to the send message, it is sending that to the Kafka topic. When we are sending the message to the Kafka topic, if the message is successfully being sent, then we have the successful scenario. And if because of some reason message is not sent to the Kafka topic, then we have the failure scenario. And here it is throwing the runtime exception. In case of success, it is returning the successful send message. Let's see the integration test. And here within the producer service test, we have should publish message. And what we are expecting is we have this message and whenever the producer service send message is being called, we will get the successful send message. So this will verify our successful scenario. Similarly, we can verify the error scenario as well. For the producer as well, we need to run the embedded Kafka server. And if I just use the consumer configuration, we can add this embedded Kafka to our producer application as well. Within the producer service test, let's add the embedded Kafka now. Whenever any message will be sent to the Kafka topic, then the producer will return the successfully sent message. And if I run this test, the test is successful. That means whatever message we are sending from here it has been sent to the Kafka topic. And after receiving the successful response, we have got this response successfully send message. So until now, we have used this embedded Kafka within our test case. With embedded Kafka, if we need to provide certain configuration for the Kafka server, we can provide them here. But these configurations would be limited. So if we need to mimic the exact Kafka server, in that case, embedded Kafka will not be able to help us here. For example, if we need to provide different partitions for different topic, so you cannot do it in that way, because here, if you provide the partitions, it will be available for all the Kafka topics. In this scenario, we can use the Docker container for the Kafka. Instead of using the embedded Kafka, we can use the test containers. For using the test container, we need a couple of libraries, and those libraries are here. So we have the test container JUnit Jupyter. Here we have the test container, and this is specifically for Kafka. If you have requirement to use MongoDB or Postgres or any other data source, then you can use the specific library for that. Now with this library, let's try to add the configuration for our test container. In the producer service test, we will remove this embedded Kafka, and here we would need the test container. Now I'll use the test containers annotation. This test containers annotation is coming from the JUnit Jupyter, that is the library that we have used over here. Now, whenever our test will run, it will load the container and whatever type of container we are initializing, that container will be created. To instantiate a container, we need to add annotation at the rate container. And here we can define the container. For example, if we have to work with Kafka, so we can use the Kafka container. That is coming from the Kafka container library that we have used. And container is equals to, you can just initialize it, new Kafka container. And here you need to provide the Docker image name. And then you can pass the name of the image which you want to instantiate. For Kafka, we can use the Kafka image. And once we do that, our Kafka container will be initialized. Now, if we need to provide some of the more configuration, so instead of adding this configuration over here, we can use another class or the configuration class. And I have already defined one Kafka test config. Here we have the configuration class Kafka test config. Within this, we have defined the containers. Instead of defining it in the test class, we have defined within the configuration and this configuration we can use in all the tests that we have. Here we have used the Docker image for the Kafka and we just need to start the Kafka container by applying the start method. Whenever the Docker container will start, it will start the Kafka server and that Kafka server might run in different port every time whenever the application is getting started. Application property, we cannot define the specific property for our bootstrap server. So here we have the bootstrap server. Earlier we were using 9094. Now we cannot use this port because this might be different all the time. For that purpose, what we need is we need to define one dynamic property and here, instead of the Kafka bootstrap servers, we would use the property. And this property we will define at the runtime. 
And for that purpose, within the Kafka test config, we are setting the property. And here we have the string Kafka bootstrap servers, and that property we will get from the Kafka.get bootstrap server. Now we have defined this Kafka test config, and this config we would also need to use within our service test at the rate context configuration. Now classes, and we have the Kafka test config dot class. With this configuration, if I run the test for the first time, it might take time because it will download the Docker image and then restart the Docker container. So here our test is successful and you can see it has started the Docker container. And then here you can see we have the bootstrap server, which is right now listening to this particular port. So this port will change every time whenever we will run the application. Because of this region, we have added the test config here and we have specifically provided the property with the current value of the bootstrap server and that is what our Kafka application is listening to as well. For running the test with the test container, we also need to have Docker installed in the system where the tests are running. So this is the primary requisite for running the tests with the Docker test containers. This is it from this video. We have seen how we can use the embedded Kafka and also we have seen how we can use the test container to run our integration tests. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and happy coding.